Welcome to Spooky History. In today's episode, we're meeting Harry Houdini's top spy, Rose Mackenberg. Before we begin, I want to bring something to your attention. This channel isn't sponsored yet, so there's no financial incentive here. I just think it's something you will like. The Hocus Pocus comic, written by Rick Worth, drawn by Jordan Culver, coloured by Owen Watts, and consulted on by Professor Richard Wiseman, this comic series is for all fans of science, magic, and mystery. The artwork is stunning, the story is engaging, and the content simply fantastic. You can get copies from HocusPocusComic.com for $6.99, or digital versions on a pay-what-you-can model. The reason I mention all of this is it's from this comic series that I first learned about Rose Mackenberg, and simply had to do a deep dive into her work. So here we are, and on with the video. The lights dim and wink out. The air grows colder. Strange noises begin. A dreadful cry. A trumpet sound, a scratching, a tapping. Inanimate objects take on a life of their own and float around the room. The table shakes, then rises. Is anybody there? Keep your hands joined, don't break the circle. Suddenly a spectral luminous mist materializes before your eyes, and a figure. Who are you going to call? Sorry, not sorry, I had to. How often do you get to see what is, in every sense of the phrase, a real-life ghost pistol? Well, guess what? You're in luck. Because we have one here tonight. Only you don't know it yet. You'd never guess in a million years. Who could it be from this circle of paying guests, seated at the psychic's table? The schoolmistress, the matron, the widow, the servant. Never mind. Shield your eyes. And... FLASH! What just blinded you was a speed flash camera exploding into life as an undercover reporter caught the ghost on film. Only I think you'll find this ghost still has a pulse. The fraudulent medium here was Mary Reichart of Emerald Avenue, Chicago, who during a 1920s seance told her audience, for a dollar apiece, she contacted the departed spirit of Native American Chief Blackhawk. The reporter was there via our very own Ghostbuster, also undercover, but you may never know which one it is. It could be that nice lady comforting the exposed, sobbing psychic from those terrible men, for all you know. Quick hint. It was. Ingratiating herself into the confidence of the fraudster, just as she has already done many times, with many mediums, in many cities. This Ghostbuster is too clever, too careful to reveal themselves just yet. Are you a spiritualist in 1920s America? If so, watch out. You won't see her coming, and you'll never find her. She'll always find you first. Chances are she already has. Chances are also that that bane of your existence, Harry Houdini, the most famous magician who's made it his business to expose fraud, is coming to town. That menace. But hang in there. You made good cash this week off gullible grievers with your own bag of tricks. Let the show off Houdini do his thing. Then he'll move on and... What? What? On stage. Houdini, who has never met you in his life, has just single-handedly demonstrated and exposed one by one each and every single seance trick of yours. Tricks you took years to perfect. He's taking your gold mine and turning it into dust. He's destroying your business, destroying your livelihoods. What's more, how did he know that? How the hell did he even know what happened in your seances? Well, so or madam, she was there. She saw you. Remember Alicia Bunk? Sounds a lot like... All is a bunk, doesn't it? Or maybe you met Francis Rord. Spot it now. F. Rord. As she once remarked concerning her disguises, mediums, although unusually crafty, can be amazingly stupid on occasions. And if there really are any ghosts, they must have run for the spectral hills, for here comes Rose Mackenberg. Born in Brooklyn, New York City, and initially working as stenographer for a law firm, Rose could not have foreseen the adventures ahead of her especially since she started out as a believer in spiritualism and fortune-telling. Even throughout her future career, she did not want to be seen as a heartless killjoy regarding life after death. I frankly don't know, and I want to be shown. It is an attitude I might describe as mental agnosticism. Ultimately, Rose sympathised with mediums who truly believed they could conjure spirits. It was the charlatans she had no patience with. It was during the early 1920s, while working as a private investigator on a case of spiritualist fraud, that she sought the advice of Harry Houdini, her future boss. The case in question was her exposure of a cabinet medium, whose invisible spirits appeared to play musical instruments, followed by a large bass drum apparently playing itself, even with the lights on. When in fact the medium had simply hired a small man from the circus to play the instruments in the dark and hide inside the drum. 
This was just prior to my association with Harry Houdini as his special detective. And it may have been that he engaged me on the strength of my reputation, slight though it was at the time, won by my exposure of this particular hoax. Disguised as a respectable, respectable old maid, I gained admission to the circle again. This time I determined to do a little materialising of my own. Cautiously lifting the curtain, I stretched out my fingers, tentatively in the direction of the bass drum, and encountered human flesh. It would have taken a special sort of person to impress the likes of Houdini, and impress him she did, enough to be hired as part of his undercover investigation team in 1925. During this time, he thoroughly educated her on every trick of the trade and the spiritualist movement until she became an expert herself. Her series of newspaper articles published in 1929 explained many such tricks she went on to witness, from spirit photography to ghostly acoustics. My secret service under the direction of Harry Houdini taught me many things, self-control, courage, resourcefulness, and the ability not to let myself be thrown off a scent by astonishment. Houdini's private investigators usually operated thus. Whilst Houdini was touring, his undercover team kept about 10 days ahead of him on the road, using this time to infiltrate the spiritualist scene of each city en route, using alias names and multiple disguises. Of this, Rose Mackenberg became a master, sometimes even using a fake hearing aid as part of her getup, be it with the guise of a schoolteacher, matron, widow, or aristocrat. The team's written reports were then delivered to Houdini, detailing particulars of the seances they'd attended and the mediums they'd met. Upon his arrival in town, ever the performer and informer, Houdini would take to the stage and spill the beans without hesitation or mercy, exposing and debunking every trick. You can imagine the intense love-hate relationship this man earned with the world, and why he was subsequently forced to carry a Derringer revolver on his person. But that did not deter Mackenberg, who refused his advice to carry a gun herself. For her, this unfolded into a career that not only made her his top agent, but saw her investigate over a thousand different mediums, none of whom she concluded were genuine. Rose also remained a childless spinster throughout her lifetime, quite handy when a favourite ploy of mediums is conjuring your long-lost husband or dear departed child. A dead giveaway. And no, I'm not sorry for that pun. Despite sometimes appearing on stage with Houdini, she preferred to keep a low profile during his lifetime. An exception was made when on the 18th of May 1926, Rose was called to offer congressional testimony on the Copeland Bloom Bill, a proposed anti-fortune-telling law for Washington DC, passionately backed by Houdini and sparking much controversy. Even before I got on the train, I had a premonition there were going to be fireworks the moment I started telling what I knew. Those were super strenuous days, filled with near riots, a welter of conflicting testimony, shouted objections, muttered oaths, copious tears, and the most marvellous, smashing demonstrations on the part of Houdini. Rose employed the exact same method as before, arriving in town ahead of her boss and nosing around Washington's spiritualist community undercover. So convincing was she that many mediums tried enrolling her in their churches, and she was ordained a minister of spiritualism no less than six times, each time for a tidy $25 fee. Already known as Mac to her friends, all these ghostly little diplomas earned her an additional nickname, the Rev or Reverend. There was no shortage of spiritualists present during Mackenberg's testimony, and when she reiterated medium's boast that table-tipping seances were held in the shadow of the White House, and that many senators contacted them for readings, pandemonium or panic would be too pallid a term to apply to what followed. When raging mediums stormed the committee table and tried physically attacking Houdini, an adjournment had to be made, and ultimately the bill did not pass. It was no less an adventure for the resilient Rose. Ordinarily, I dislike scenes, but this pandemonium of unleashed hysteria was not only volcanically dramatic, but, to one on the inside looking out, extremely funny. Based on Mackenberg's writings, there was little doubt she thought the world of Houdini and believed him one of the world's greatest magicians, often calling him the boss or the master, one of the most decent and God-fearing men who ever lived. It is true that Houdini was a most acute showman and never overlooked a chance for legitimate publicity. But he was also a fighting fanatic aligned against what he sincerely believed to be fraud and sham and greed, and if in that fight he too became excited, it was the excitement of profound belief in opposing what he pictured as the powers of evil. It's poetic irony that one of Houdini's greatest debunking feats was performed from beyond the grave. Prior to his passing in 1926, he had already devised a secret afterlife communication code to be used in the event of his death, just in case. A code he shared with only a small circle of his most entrusted friends. Rose Mackenberg was among those friends. And ever dutiful, she later stated in 1945 that the message has not come through. Nor did her work end with his death, but continued for a further 20 years, 
during which time she investigated more fraudulent psychics on behalf of businesses, the press, and law firms. She went on to tour the country with public lectures, such as debunking the ghost racket, where she demonstrated table tipping, floating objects, materializations, you name it. After all, she'd learned from the best. So much so, that she kept her New York apartment brightly lit. Apparently, by now, she was tired of sitting in dark rooms. Her series of 1929 news articles on the ghost racket were collected together for a manuscript called So You Want to Attend a Seance. Sadly, the manuscript was never published, but her highly entertaining articles and reports survive to this day. But for all this hard work, where the exposed spook racket weakened in one quarter, it always gained momentum in another and never seemed to die down. World War II and the Korean War were on their merry way, and with them more spiritualist churches would pop up everywhere, aided by the media. Even Mackenberg was resignedly aware that no number of exposures, in fact, seemed to shake the faith of believers. And with a new generation of charlatans, new tricks have replaced the older, debunked ones, meaning there are likewise new Rose Mackenbergs already on the case, never far behind. Because whatever your stance on ghosts, the beauty of it is, ghostbusters are real. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to give us a like on Facebook, a sub on YouTube, and a follow on Insta and Twitter at Spooky Hist Show. You can support us on Patreon, where you get access to all sorts of extras, including early access to videos at patreon.com forward slash noisy ghost ends. If you have ideas for future topics we can discuss, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please, do have nightmares. Goodbye.